Okay. Uh, good morning. Uh, today we are having a seminar on uh, blood transfusion. So we have three speakers, Dr. Nitesh, Dr. Prashenjit and Dr. Milind, who are uh, DNB resident and MR Bangalore Hospital. So uh, first speaker will be Dr. Nitesh and he will speak on uh, different blood products and probably he will also speak on principles of blood transfusion. Uh, Dr. Nitesh, you can share your screen and start. Yes, sir. Uh, before you start, let me just tell you that uh, uh, today morning, I think I've posted a document. Yeah, I got it. Which is actually a policy document uh, in our country. I mean, it's very, uh, very updated. That is 2022 and basically covers all aspects of uh, transfusion, of all products, except for the uh, complications. I think everything is there. I think I would request all the students to please go through it. So, sir, let's start. Yeah. Okay, sir. Thank you. Good morning, respected teachers. I am Dr. Nitesh Pradhan, third year DNB PGT MR Bangor Hospital. I am going to talk about uh, blood products. Start with a uh, little background of transfusion. In 1492, uh, first uh, the Pope Innocent VIII suffers a stroke and receives a blood transfusion from three 10 year old boys. All three boys died, as did the platter that year. 1818, James uh, Blundell performed the first transfusion documented uh, human transfusion in a woman suffering postpartum hemorrhage. She received blood from her husband and survived. In 1901, Carl Lanster uh, discover the ABO system. In 1937, the, uh, the world first hospital blood bank was established on 5th, uh, March 15, Cook County Hospital of Chicago, USA. 1939, the India's first blood bank was set up in the School of Tropical Medicine, Kolkata, by Sir Upendra Nath Brahmachari, the chairman of <coughs> Red Cross Society. Indication of blood transfusion, volume replacement, treatment of anemia. Uh, improvement of oxygen carrying capacity, coagulation disorder, prophylactically in major surgeries. Indication of uh, blood transfusion, uh, perioperative uh, peri blood, blood transfusion criteria. If hemoglobin is less than a 6, the probably will benefit from transfusion. 6 to 8, transfusion unlikely to benefit, uh, unlikely to be of benefit in the absence of bleeding or impending hap surgery. More than 8, no indication for, <clears throat> for transfusion in the absence of other risk factors. Uh, as different blood components have different relative densities, sedimentation rate and size, uh, they can separate it uh, when centrifugal force is applied. Whole blood uh, into cellular element, plasma component, plasma derivatives. Now, in increasing order of uh, uh, specific gravity, uh, the components are plasma, platelets, then leukocytes, packed RVC. The component must be separated within four hours of blood collection. Any single component can be separated by a process known as AFRSS. The components are bloods, uh, uh, bloods uh, uh, 55% of plasma, 1% of platelet WBC count, 44% <coughs> of red blood cells. A whole blood, uh, uh, if uh, we sent through uh, uh, light spin, it will uh, separated into RBC concentrate uh, and uh, platelet-rich plasma. And if that uh, platelet-rich plasma is heavily uh, spin, uh, around 10 to 15 minutes, it will uh, uh, separate it into random platelet concentrate and platelet-poor uh, uh, plasma. And further uh, rapid freezing and storage will uh, form the fresh frozen plasma. And if the whole blood is uh, centrifuged he he with heavy spin for 10 to 15 minutes, uh, it will separate the component into RBC concentrate, platelet, platelet poor plasma, and buffy coat. And then uh, the buffy coat is uh, with light spin, uh, the platelet, uh, random platelet concentrate, and uh, the buffy coat waste. Start with whole blood. Uh, the volume is 350 to 450 ml, and uh, the storage temperature for the whole blood is 2 to 6 degrees centigrade. The self life depends upon the uh, depends upon the depending upon the anticoagulant used. 
ACD, that is acid citrate dextrose, the self life is 21 days. CPD, that is citrus phosphate dextrose, 21 days. CDPA, uh, with addition of adenine, 35 days. And SAGM, that is uh, saline, adenine, uh, glucose, and mannitol, it increases further self life of 42 days. Indication, acute hemorrhage. Disadvantage of whole blood is during storage, there uh, occurs a decrease in ADP and 2,3 DPG level leading to altered oxygen dis uh, association curve of hemoglobin resulting in decreased O2 transport. As a, as a result, the RBC progressively become uh, acidotic with uh, increased level of lactate, uh, potassium ion and ammonia. Packed RBC, uh, packed R uh, PRBC uh, is product of choice in many uh, uh, emergency uh, situation uh, where we need a resuscitation. Concentrated suspension of uh, RBC formed by the removal of supernatant plasma after centrifugation. Due to the removal of plasma, the incidence of reaction due to the plasma component are reduced. Also, the RBC viability is higher and concentration of ADP and 2,3 DPG are maintained. The volume is 350 to 450 ml. Storage temperature is 2 to 6 degrees centigrade. Self life again depends upon the anticoagulant used. Indications are anemia, hemolytic diseases like sickle cell anemia, thalassemia. One unit of PRBC increases the hemoglobin by one gram. And fresh frozen plasma. Uh, uh, fresh frozen plasma uh, is a source of vitamin K dependent clotting factor and the only source of factor 5. Volume is 250 ml. Uh, storage temperature is minus, uh, uh, minus 40 to minus 50 uh, degrees centigrade. And the self life is 2 years. Indication in multiple coagulation factor deficiency. Cryoprecipitate, it consists of factor uh, 8, <coughs> 13, fibrinogen, and the uh, von Willebrand factor. Volume is 10 to 20 ml. Storage temperature is less than uh, is minus 30 degrees centigrade. Self life is 2 year. Indication in hemophilia A, uh, factor 13 deficiency, A, uh, a fibrinogenemia, von Willebrand factor disease. Valve Willebrand disease. Then platelet concentrate, it includes RDP, uh, that is random uh, donor platelet, and SDP, that is single donor uh, platelet. Volume of RDP is 50 to 70 ml, and the volume of SDP is 200 to 300 ml. The storage temperature is uh, at room, uh, uh, room, air, uh, room air, that is 20 to 25 degrees centigrade with constant agitation in the platelet agitator. The self life is up to five days from uh, the time of collection. Indication, thrombocytopenia due to uh, massive blood loss, due to massive replacement with poor platelet products, qualitative and quantitative platelet disorders. It is highly levile and high risk of contamination and the transmission of infection since the stored at room temperature. One unit of uh, RDP increases the platelet count by 10,000 and one uh, unit of SDP increases by 30 to 50,000. Then prothrombin complex con concentrate. It is highly purified concentrate prepared from the pool plasma. It contains factor 2, uh, <clears throat> 9 and 10. Indication for the emergency, emergency reversal of warfarin therapy. Then autologous blood. Now it is a process uh, where the patient donates and stores their own blood preoperatively. Up to 5 units can be collected from subsequent use provided there, uh, provided that uh, their hemoglobin level should more than 11 gram per DL uh, or hematocrete, hematocrete more than 34%. The first uh, procure, procurement is done uh, 40 days before the scheduled surgery, while the last one can be done three days before the surgery. The donation can be done at the interval of three to four days and uh, <clears throat> the patient can be, uh, can be given uh, uh, recombinant human erythropoietin as it accelerates the generation of RBCs. And leukocyte reduced and leukocyte reduced washed RBC. Now, it, uh, <clears throat> it is obtained by the filtration which removes uh, uh, almost 99.9% .9 of WBC and majority of the platelets. Additionally, saline wash can be given. Leukocyte reduction prevents the febrile reaction manifesting commonly as a fever with or without rigor in the post-transfusion period. This also reduces the allo uh, immunization to HLA class 1 antigen and reduces the CMV infection. An allogenic transfusion of WBC might be associated with post-transfusion bacterial infection and multi-organ failure. In such cases, leukocyte reduced blood is used to, useful to reduce the risk of infection and mortality. 
then other blood substitutes are red cell substitutes are biomimetic uh, substitute that is hemoglobin based it mimics the standard oxygen carrying capacity of the blood and abiotic substitute that is uh, that contains uh, per fluorocarbon based and synthetic oxygen carrier and plasma substitute are human albumin 4.5% obtained by the plasma fractionation used in uh, patient with cirrhosis uh, burns and nephrotic syndrome then hydroxy thiol starch plasma volume expander then gelatin used uh, iv as a hem seal plasma expander then next trans uh, it is a polysaccharide of the uh, variable molecular weight obtained from uh, liponostoc mesenteroid bacteria in the yeast then dextran uh, dextran interferes with the blood grouping and cross matching in high doses leads to platelet dysfunction hyperchloremic acidosis and central pontyl myelinosis thank you sir Yeah. Uh, yes. Rosha, all three finish up, then you take some question. No, no, no. I, I, I think, I think we will, we will, we will, uh, <laughs> we will do it peacefully. Yeah. Now you have to, you have talked about your. I mean, can you go to your first slide? Okay. Uh, keep on, uh, keep on going downwards. Yes. Next. Next. Next, yes, next, and uh, next, uh, yeah, uh, whole blood. Now, uh, regarding whole blood, I just have to say this, that you will find it in the books also, that as long as trauma is the major epidemic that we come across, I mean, in our country and worldwide, whole blood is now gradually coming back. It's yes, also, also mentioned in the books because... I mean, when you treat a trauma patient, when you have to transfuse, you have to put three things together, and uh, just uh, just to do, do away with that, whole blood is gradually making a comeback. But as of now, presently, I think uh, there is uh, at least in our state where we work, whole blood is almost not available. But uh, uh, within a couple of years, uh, maybe. Uh, this is going to come back. That is what I have been told by at least our bank. Okay, yes. then proceed. Uh, yes. Uh, okay, next. Next. Yes, regarding plasma, you have mentioned that, I mean, it has to be somewhere in the slide you have mentioned it, is, it has to be uh, separated within four hours or something. Where is yes. that slide? Yes. Yeah. Ah. Uh, but if you go to go through the document, uh, it has been said that if you have uh, uh, blood preserved in your bank, and even if it has expired, yes. Sir. Remember, there should be blood preserved in the bank, even if it has expired. After that, also you can collect plasma, right? You can do away with the cells; they are no longer useful but the plasma can be collected from expired blood, provided the blood has been stored in the bank, right? Yes, sir. Okay, now proceed. Yeah, uh, regarding fresh frozen plasma, this is something, I mean, we in surgery uh, ask for, isn't it? Yes, Most sir. of the time when we, when we are uh, treating patients with obstructive jaundice, right? Now, suppose uh, you need a good number of uh, units of plasma, say early in the morning or late in the night before the operation, you will have to uh, transfuse these patients, I mean, these uh, units of plasma. In that case, what do you do? Do we, do we transfuse all the packets together? The standard teaching is that, I mean, if fresh frozen plasma is brought from the bank, it has to be transfused immediately. Yes, sir. Oh, fine. Yes, but thing, the thing is, only thing you have to remember is it, it has to be transfused immediately, fine. But suddenly if you find that uh, the, the bank has given you or you have asked for six or eight packets and they have given you all of them together, then what do you do? All you can do is you can keep it in the refrigerator, the refrigerator which we have in the ward, of course not in the freezer compartment, for a maximum period of six hours. Now the thing is earlier the better, definitely. Because here all you need is a lot of coagulation factors. So the more delay you you make, you will be losing these factors. Yeah. So that is the thing. So that is why 
the rule of thumb is yes you have to uh, transfuse this uh, fft as quickly as possible just to get the maximum advantage of these factors which are there in the in the plasma okay fine proceed yes how much platelet does a, a unit contain you have mentioned here yes sir 10, uh, yes sir. yes and maybe 10000 uh, and a single donor is more isn't it 30 to 50 yeah single donor platelets are mainly needed in case of i think mostly in dengue possibly i'm not very really sure about the intricacies anyway okay proceed These are specific requirements in certain cases, right? Okay. Yes, that's all. Uh, regarding uh, regarding uh, transmission in trauma patients, that's now the standard recommendation is uh, if you are going for massive transmission protocol, you transfuse one, uh, one is two, one is two, one. That yes, means uh, uh, PRBC, one uh, plasma, yes. and one uh, yes. platelet concentrate. So that comes to almost a whole blood transmission. I agree because in, in acute trauma, uh, patient is losing whole blood. So it, it's, it's not uh, unusual that if you transfer whole blood, you are replacing the same one is to one is to one uh, ratio. Just because the things are not available, now the recommendation is like that. If you are giving the patient a massive transmission in a trauma scenario, it should be one is to one is to one. Yeah, I mean, that, that is the reason why whole blood is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is making a way back no, just because only, uh, only, only to treat are not, not storing whole blood, they are storing all uh, components <coughs> separated. So, if in a trauma you are giving more transmission, you have to keep in mind that you have to give all three components uh, at a ratio of one is two, one is two, one. And and the more important is uh, the blood. I think you should not put albumin as a blood substitute, albumin is also a blood component. The albumin is separated from the human plasma and by uh, uh, some concentration technique. So, uh, more important is now people are coming up with uh, blood substitutes. Uh, and a lot of research are on, but still uh, all blood substitutes have not replaced the recovered blood in particular situation. Uh, we can pass on to the next speaker, Dr. Prashant. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <coughs> Good morning, our respected teachers and our faculty members. I am Dr. Prashanjit Boshu, first year PGT, Marbangu District Hospital. I am going to present blood bank and blood group and cross matching. <coughs> it is the introduction which of blood bank. Bank. It is a bank of blood or blood component gathered as a result of blood donation stored and preserved for later use in blood transfusion. The term blood bank typically refers to a division of hospital laboratory where the storage of blood product occurs and proper testing of blood is performed to reduce the risk of transfusion related events. Nowadays, stand alone blood bank also occur and can be a government holding body or private body. There is some history. On March 15, 1937, World's first hospital blood bank was established in Cook County Hospital of Chicago, United States. In 1939, India's first blood bank was set up in a school of tropical medicine, Kolkata, by Sarupendranath, with the, the then chairman of Bengal Red Cross Society. In 1986, first AIDS patient due to blood transfer in, in Mumbai was reported, thus realizing the immense importance of testing the blood before transfusion. In 1996, Supreme Court of India gave a judgment on blood transfusion and blood banking in India as a result of which National Blood Transfusion Council and State Blood Transfusion Council were established. <clears throat> 
storage of blood most of the blood for transfusion collected as whole blood autologous donation are sometimes transferred for the modification the whole blood is typically separated by centrifugation into as previously described by our previous speakers into component with rbc in solution being commonly used products units of whole blood and rbc are both kept refrigerated at 1 to 6 degree Celsius with maximum permitted storage period self about 35 and 40 days respectively. Short term storage. Frozen red cells are given expiration dates or dates of up to one to two years and are stored at minus 65 degrees Celsius. This is known as long term storage of blood. Treatment of blood plasma. If the plasma is frozen promptly and is intended for transfusion, it is typically labeled as fresh frozen plasma. If it is intended to be made into other product, it is typically labeled as a recovered plasma or plasma for fractionation. The layer between the RBC and the plasma is referred to as the buffy coat, removed to make platelet for transfusion. Platelet have a shelf life of five days kept at a room temperature of 20 to 24 degrees Celsius with frequent agitation. Now, blood grouping and cross matching. Blood, group. blood grouping is based on types of antigen present on the red blood cells. There are more than 300 blood group systems, but ABO and recess are of importance from clinical point of view. Other blood group systems are MNS, Lutheran, Scales, Levy, Stuffy, and Kittles. <clears throat> ABO system discovered by Carl Lestiner in 1900. The red cells contain different types of antigen, agglutinogen, while plasma contain agglutinin. Genes that control the system are present on chromosome 9. For a Landsteiner gives a law for this. If an antigen is present on a patient's RBC, the corresponding antibody should not be present in present plasma under normal condition. Based on this antigen and antibody A, B, and O, A, B, four blood groups are mentioned. A contains uh, a antigen, but it miss uh, missing B antigen and anti B. B contains B antigen and anti A antibody. O does not contain any antigen, but both antibody, anti A and anti B. A B contains both antigen, but no antibody. Methods of blood grouping. There are two methods of blood grouping: slide method and tube methods. So, tube method better method but takes longer. Sample in tube with antisem incubated, centrifuge it, examine it macroscopically and microscopically for agglutination. Slide methods requires three slides containing antisera A and antisera B and blood samples. It is a little description of procedure. Take two clean slides and mark them one and two. Put one drop of antisera A on slide one and one drop of antisera B on slide two. Add one drop of blood to each and mix well with sticks. Wait for five minutes and observe. Observation. If any agglutination occurs, it is visible with naked eyes as dark reddish clumps of different size. If agglutination is minimal, it can be confirmed by examining it under microscope. Agglutination with anti A, not with anti B, group as blood group A. Agglutination with anti B, not with anti A, categorized as blood group B. Agglutination with both anti A and anti B categorized as blood group A and no agglutination in any slight blood group O as it does not contain any antigen. Universal donor. Blood group O has no antigen and no agglutination. Universal recipients are blood group AB as both A and B antigen present. So agglutination occurs both as no antibody present in serum. Bombay blood group is a very rare blood group uh, as it in Bombay blood groups, H genes are missing, uh, antigen is missing. These people lack H along with A and B antigen, but plasma contain anti A and anti B and anti H. Bombay phenotype by individual with who lacks H gene. So it is description about RS typing. RS blood group system is second in significance after ABO systems. Genes that control the system are present on chromosome 1, consist of over 50 related antigens. Important genes are D, C, E, C, and E. RH positive 
patient or those patient in which there is presence of D antigen and individual consists of more than eight, um, approximately 80% of population are Rh positive. Rh negative, there is absence of D antigen. This individual constitutes 70% of population. CC and EE antigen, these are weak antigen, therefore risk of sensitization is less than that of D antigen. RH antibody, unlike ABO system, there is no naturally occurring antibody against RH antigen in RH negative individual. Immune and RH antibody develops against RH antigen after exposure to RH antigen following transfusion or pregnancy, but can be detected by enzyme treatment or direct Coombs test. Uh, indirect cost. Uh, significance. RH incompatibility results in hemolytic transfusion reaction. Hemolytic disease of newborn. Importance of blood grouping and RH typing in blood transfusion, hemolytic disease of newborn, paternity dispute, medical legal issue, immunological genetics, anthropology, susceptibility to various diseases. Cross-messing, also known as compatibility testing, it is the most important test before a trans blood transfusion is given. The primary purpose of cross-messing is to detect ABO incompatibility between donor and recipients. This is carried out to prevent transfusion reaction by detecting antibody in recipient serum. Two main functions of cross-messing test, it is confirm ABO incompatibility between donor and recipient. It may detect presence of irregular antibody in present serums that will react with donors RBC. Cross-matching test can be major, minor. Major cross-match test mixing the patient's plasma with donors RBC. Minus cross-match test mixing the donor plasma with patient's RBC. It is completely eliminated in most blood bank recipient cells are common. Compatibility test. Compatibility at room temperature pressure. Take one drop of recipient serums, plasma in a small test tube at 5% saline suspension of donor RBC. Mix the two. Incubate at room temperature. Centrifuge checks for hydration or hemolysis. Screening test before blood transfusion uh, done are malaria, syphilis, hepatitis B virus, hepatitis C virus, and HIV. Thank you. Well, I think uh, you have mainly covered technical details, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So in that, uh, obviously, I don't have much to add. I would like to know what Mahonda has to say. Uh, these are the situations that you, one should go through when you recognition for blood and what are the precautions uh, as a resident you should take while you uh, send for blood blood grouping cost matching? Because most of the error occurs, most of the error in transmission occurs because of this clerical error. So what are the things you follow when you uh, requisition a blood? Sir, so patient's uh, uh, identification is uh, uh, determined by registration number, patient's name, and all details of patients should be matched before. Uh, so once maybe. you draw blood for requisition, it should yes. be properly labeled. Yes, sir. Okay, that is number one. And number two, while you fill the requisition form, that requisition form should tally with what uh, the sample has been labeled as. Yes, sir. Okay. And yes. then you send this blood for grouping and cross matching. Awesome. And if the patient already had Transfusion, you already know the blood grouping. In that yes. case, you should mention the patient uh, known blood groups. Yes, sir. Okay, because most of the error occur during this clerical process. And while transfusing blood, the blood has come from the blood bank. What steps you follow before you start the transfusion? Sir, in case of um, uh, uh, whole blood, we can uh, transfuse it. Uh, by uh, putting uh, it in some time for in room temperature and normalize the what temperature. I'm, what I'm saying is the yes, precautions. Sir. That means you are going to transfuse a blood which is a life saver, which is also a, uh, uh, a situation which can kill the patient also. So your job will be to first cross, cross take the back, mm -hmm. see the blood bank number yes, huh. and the details which is pasted on the blood bag and tally that with the, the uh, form they send by the blood bank people. 
Yes. Sir. So you have to tally with the, your previous record and the bank you received from the blood bank. Blood bank. Okay. Suppose yeah. that is the discrepancy. You find the blood group patient already had. Now this blood group is very. What steps you should take? Well, I send it to blood bank for cross yes. further so, cross matching and transmission. If you have some discrepancy, you should verify it. You see, there are a lot of things in the world that some uh, name, uh, uh, it is O against A. So these are all uh, minor clerical mistakes that you can ignore. But uh, if there is a major discrepancy between the blood being sent and what the record is, you should uh, verify it again. Yes, sir. Okay. And you see, the two things. One, whatever you write in the blood requisition form, has to be done in capital letters, number one, right? Everything should be in capital letters. And that is very highly possible, number one. Number two, the blood bank's job is to group and cross-match the blood. And your job is to cross-match the patient details. Yes, sir. Right? Whether they are matching with the packet of blood, where it is there, I mean, the numbers, the groups, and because as soon as the sister uh, in the ward uh, receives the packet of blood, what she does is she, she again does that. And then she fixes a label on that packet of blood with the patient's details once more. So yes. it has been done once, but your job is to do it again. So that is because many an accident has occurred, right? I mean, this, this clerical mistake is responsible for a number of problems you will face in transfusion. Right, the typical uh, mismatch transfusion is just due to this and nothing else. Okay, let's proceed. Okay, uh, last speaker is Dr. Milind Alokji, who is a third year junior resident at MR Bangor Hospital. So, Milind, you can share your screen and uh, present. So, I think I have taken his identity. <laughs> he sent me a link, you know. Okay, carry on. Uh, sir, is my screen visible? Not yet. Just one second. Yeah. yeah. Now it's okay. Uh, good morning, respected teachers. Uh, I'm Dr. Melinda Alokji, and the topic that I'm presenting today is complications of blood transfusion. Uh, now, before starting, I would just like to say that uh, when it comes to any complication related to blood transfusions, the first thing that we must always do is that we must stop the transfusion. Now, if we can classify the complications into immune origin, those of immune origin and those of non-immune origin. And among them, there are immediate transfusion reactions which happen within minutes or hours. And then there are those which are late that happen within days and years. Now, among the immune origin, we have those such as hemolytic uh, transfusion reaction, febrile, non-hemolytic, allergic, and trali. And among the late ones, we have, again, we have a delayed hemolytic reaction, aluminization, post-transfusion purpura, and uh, graft-versus-host disease. Among the non-immune origin one, in the immediate, we again have hemolytic, septic, circulatory overload, air embolism. And in the late ones, we have infections and hemosiderosis. But for the purpose of discussing them, we will discuss them as acute transfusion reactions and delayed transfusion reactions. Now, among acute transfusion reactions, sorry, among acute transfusion reactions, we have uh, uh, all these which we will take up separately. First of all, we have acute hemolytic reaction. Now, the cause of acute hemolytic reaction is transfusion of incompatible red cells to a recipient who has previously preformed antibodies to the red cell antigen, which can be anti A or anti B. And most commonly, this happens because of patient misidentification. This starts within minutes of the transfusion. Now, this is mediated uh, mainly through immune mechanisms and uh, through the activation of the complement system. And the severity depends upon the amount of the blood transfused and the transfusion rate. The faster the infusion rate, the more severe the reaction will be. Here, uh, clinical signs include shock, hypotension, bronchospasm, which are all uh, related to uh, the complement anaphy anaphylatoxic uh, complement activation, renal ischemia, tubular necrosis, leading to acute renal failure. The cytokine network, uh, uh, the cytokine network becomes elaborated, and there is a fever, hypotension, and uh, activation of the coagulation cascade, leading to DIC. 
and biochemical diagnosis there may be hemoglobinemia and hemoglobinuria there is decreased hematocrit decreased hemoglobin increased ldh and uh, serum bilirubin might increase 6 to 12 hours later now the next we come to drug induced hemolysis now drug induced now this is i'm just short uh, briefly mentioning it because it is not exactly a transfusion reaction but many a time it can be completely confused with the uh, with the hemolytic transfusion reaction in a patient who has recently got a transfusion uh, this is because a number of times when a patient who is getting a transfusion may be getting some other medicines such as antibiotics also and in this case there is induction of new antigen on the red cell membrane or formation of immune complex that deposit on the red cell and cause the uh, cause hemolysis this can happen both on autologous and transfuse cells and uh, is this may be severe and even fatal and the important thing here is to identify it and stop the drug uh, stop the drugs and the transfusion and then give supportive care there are multiple drugs uh, uh, implicated some important ones are uh, cephalosporins now as we can see this can be drug independent and dependent in drug independent the hemolysis continues even after the drug is stopped but in the drug dependent one once the drug is cleared the hemolysis the hemolysis stops next we come to non immune hemolysis which is mechanical now the cause of this is artificial heart valves extracorporeal circulation transfusion through small bore catheters and or even osmotic lysis if the blood has been uh, is uh, the temperature of the blood is not proper or uh, which can be high temperature or low temperature and in this case there is hemoglobinuria uh, may occur but it is not associated with shock next we come to febrile non hemolytic transfusion reaction which is an anti hla mediated now the definition of this is more than 1 degree centigrade rise in the 2 hours following transfusion and this is mainly uh, regulated by pyrogen production il16 and tnf alpha and antibodies directed against transfused leukocytes and platelets the presentation is that of fever and we can this can be prevented using leukocyte reduced blood compounds next we have allergic reactions allergic reactions uh, are due to plasma proteins and immunoglobin a and it may occur in one person or transfused patient it is due to an antibody uh, antibody antigen reaction um, and the presentation includes uh, uh, cutaneous manifestations uh, uh, tcheria flushing itching nausea vomiting diarrhea bronchospasm bronchospasm it is not dose related it is generally mild not recurrent and responds to antihistamines and uh, very rarely there might be an anaphylactic reaction now the prevention is to consider wash blood components uh, wash blood components and antihistamines next we come to circulatory overload that is transfusion associated circulatory overload in this case the patient is unable to compensate for the expanded blood volume and signs include headache dyspnea pulmonary edema congestive heart failure and systolic hypertension treatment is to stop the transfusion and uh, to prevent the rate should be 2 to 4 ml per kg per hour now here if we see uh, transfusion associated circulatory overload we see that there are some the two hits the first is that the patient who is receiving the blood has a uh, poor adaptability for volume overload so there may be cardiac failure there may be renal failure there may be a positive fluid balance and the second hit is in the transfusion product there is suboptimal fluid management uh, as a result of which what happens is there is hydrostatic edema there is increased fluid infiltration and there is increased hydrostatic pressure which which causes the circulatory overload next we have uh, tali transfusion related acute lung injury this is non cardiogenic pulmonary edema uh, with an incidence of 0.08 to 15% and this also has a two hit model the first is it again is again the underlying patient factor where there is activation of the pulmonary endothelium and accumulation and adherence of the prime neutrophils in the lung and the second hit is the mediators in the blood transfusion that activates the pulmonary neutrophils and cause capillary leakage and pulmonary edema uh, the donor in this case is often a multiparous woman now here we see that how the how uh, what happens in the trali in this case we see that this is actually an immune mediated mechanism where the permeability of the membrane increases and this leads to permeability edema which is non cardiogenic here also we have first hit and second hit now uh, trali has a specific definition uh where we have suspicion of trali possible trali and late trali and depending on the a uh, suspicion of trali it is of acute onset and usually 6 hours after the blood has been transfused there is there is bilateral infiltrative changes in the chest radiograph the pao2 by fio2 is less than 300 mm of mercury or worsening uh there are no signs of hydrostatic pulmonary edema and there is no other risk factor for acute lung injury possible trali is the same criteria as trali plus risk factor present for acute lung injury and late is the same as trali but the appearance is after 6 hours within 6 to 72 hours 
Presentation here is respiratory distress, hypoxia, fever, bilateral pulmonary edema during or within the six hours after transfusion. Patients as at risk are those uh, who have undergone cardiac surgery, sepsis, massive transfusion. Resolution is usually within 48 to 72 hours, but there is a component of mortality around 10%. And diagnosis is by detection of HLA and leukocyte antibody in donor plasma and HLA antigen typing of the recipient. Now, uh, this is how trali is managed, but most importantly, this part here, uh, the treatment of PAS is what we have to uh, uh, pay attention to, where we, how do we manage it? We basically, this is, uh, we give supplementary oxygen, mechanical ventilatory assistance if needed, hemodynamic support and others. Also to prevent it, unnecessary transfusion should be avoided. The storage and processing of the blood should be proper. Uh, leukocyte reduced components uh, should be done. And in case of trali, blood, the blood bank, the blood banks must be uh, alerted to this as the donors then need to be screened. Although the chance that the, that the donor, uh, that the blood given by the donor again causes a trali in another patient is less, yet there is a protocol for the donor to be screened. Again, another very important thing is to identify the differential diagnosis for trali. Now we see the most important differential diagnosis are uh, transfusion associated circulatory overload and uh, dyspnea with transfusion. Now here we see that uh, the uh, why these are closely associated because they all happen within the first six to eight hours after the transfusion. But the difference is, as we can see in the circulatory overload, there is high pulmonary pressure, hypertension and pulmonary edema, where in case of trali, there's dyspnea, hypoxia and hypotension. So here we see that there's a comparison between a uh, circulatory overload and lung injury, where here it is a hydrostatic mechanism, whereas here it is a, there is increased permeability and there is basically an immune mechanism. Again, both trali and taco uh, rails, acute dyspnea, hypoxemia, acute pulmonary edema, diffuse bilateral infiltrates are seen in both. But how do we differentiate them? In case of trali, there is no fever. There will be no circulatory uh, overload. Ejection fraction will be normal. BNP will be less than 250. There will be hypotension as compared to hypertension in circulatory overload. Uh, JVP will be unchanged. In circulatory overload, it may be distended. There is transient leukopenia. And there is inconsistent improvement diuretics in case of trali. Whereas in case of circula circulatory overload, there is improvement. And this is uh, some of the uh, X-ray features that we might see. Uh, there is alveolar shadows in this case and in cardiac failure there is enlarged cardiac shadow and there will be perihilar vascular conjunction and total effusion. Next we come to hypotensive reaction. This is usually seen after platelet transfusion or dead cells. Pathophysiology is it is due to bradykinin generation which causes vasodilation and hypotension and the treatment is to stop the transfusion which leads to rapid resolution. Bacterial contamination, the rate is 0.3% and it's a less serious reaction. Contamination is usually during phlebotomy and the Skin flora is usually uh, the, the, the cause, uh, including staphylococcal cleptial escherichia. Uh, Presentation is fever, dyspnea, hypotension, and treatment uh, is stop the transfusion, supportive care, broad spectrum antibiotics, and report uh, immediately to the blood, blood bank where their additional components must be recorded. Thermal effects uh, such as hypothermia uh, might cause uh, arrhythmia and overwarming cause hemolysis. And basically, we, that's why blood banking is very important because the temperature of the blood should be maintained. Uh, metabolic complications, uh, citrate is one of the uh, media in which the blood is stored. It may cause calcium chelation. Then reversible leakage of potassium during storage may lead to hyperkalemia. And washing red blood cells, uh, and the, we can prevent this by washing of red blood cells and use of uh, uh, blood cells less than seven days old. Now, this here is in brief, uh, the all the... Uh, transfusion related complications, the acute ones. Uh, I will not uh, go into the detail again. Now management, uh, overall for acute transfusion reactions, firstly, we must stop the transfusion. We verify that the correct units was given to the correct patient as already has been discussed. We maintain IV access, blood pressure, pulse uh, and diuresis. We maintain adequate oxygenation. We notify the physician and the blood bank and consult with the blood bank physician before further transfusion. We return the unit or the empty back to the blood bank. Now, these things are uh, technical things, but they're very important. We obtain blood and urine sample for analysis. We monitor signs of hemolysis, coagulation, and renal status. Monitor hemoglobin, hematocrit, repeat compatibility testing, cross-matching, and analyze the urine for hemoglobinuria. And if bacterial contamination is suspected, we go for blood culture of patient and unit and initiate broad-spectrum antibiotics. Also, a second component is analysis at the blood bank. We ensure that the correct blood component trans was transfused to the right patient. And uh, 
plasma is such, uh, and uh, post transfusion sample should be put for direct coumstans pre transfusion should be for uh, rapid agglutination and abo rh cross matches next we come to delayed transfusion reactions now delayed hemolytic anemia uh, the cause is induction of antibodies days or weeks after a transfusion by transfused red cells now this appearance of transfusion uh, if it is after days it is due to an anamnestic reaction and after weeks by a primary response and most of this is extravascular now the symptoms are less severe than acute uh, hemolytic reaction and the clinical signs include fever malaise fatigue uh, uh, there is a, a positive direct agglutination test regenerative anemia with direct hyper uh, hyperbilirubinemia and there is increased ldh and the implicated antibodies are tuffy antibodies in kit uh, systems uh, less intensive complements uh, the activation of the complement system is less intensive as a result of which the symptoms are less uh, uh, less extreme and prevention is by high dose iv ivig now this is just a small comparison between intravascular and extravascular uh, hemolysis why this is important because in case of delayed reaction it is an extravascular we see that hemoglobinemia hemoglobinuria uh, are the uh, main uh, are the main uh, components through which we can uh, differentiate between the two then acute versus delayed hemolytic reaction uh the first column is for the acute one the second is for the delayed uh, among signs and symptoms hemoglobinemia and hemoglobinuria again are important differentiating factors here the usual cause is abo incompatibility where here it is igg non complement fixing to the antibody uh in both the cases we stop the transfusion the, the, the we stop the transfusion here we give supportive uh, treatment whereas in the case of delayed we monitor the hematocrit renal and uh, hepatic function coagulation profile now post transfusion purpura thrombocytopenia uh, occurring 1 to 3 weeks after the transfusion uh, the cause is allo antibody antiplatelet and diagnostic is antibody detection but there is spontaneous resolution after 2 to 3 weeks treatment uh, depends on the risk of hemorrhage if there is low risk then we wait and see and if there is high risk then we uh, go for plasma ferrous or platelet transfusion graft versus host disease uh, it is mainly because donor lymphocytes are uh, in graft and recognize host compatibility antigen and attack the host tissue uh, and this presents as fever cutaneous rash diarrhea 10 to 12 days after transfusion and it is faced fatal in most cases prevention can be through irradiation of blood and cellular components immune modulation the exact relationship is uh, not clearly proven but there is an alteration in the recipient immune system after transfusion which is both beneficial and del uh, deleterious beneficial because prolongation of it is seen that there is prolongation of renal anograft survival or prevention of spontaneous abortion whereas deleterious because uh, increase risk of tumor recurrence and post operative infection so this immune modulation can be both positive and negative but the relationship in case of blood transfusion has not been exactly proved hemosiderosis 1 ml of red cells contain about uh, 1 mg of iron and a unit contains around 150 to 250 mg of iron and this iron accumulation can lead to damage to various organs air embolism is a rare with conventional transfusion techniques now and uh, uh, it is if it occurs which is very rare it is, it has a fatal risk now transfusion transmitted diseases uh, as we have already seen the blood donate donors are screened for uh, hbs ag uh, uh, hepatitis b hepatitis c hiv syphilis and uh, but there are a number of emergent viruses that are coming up for transfusion so these include prions such as uh, uh, kruzfel jacob uh, arboviruses such as west nile virus dengue chikungunya and other emergent viruses such as uh, hhv8 erythrovirus b19 and influenza now uh when we talk about massive transfusion we see that there are certain complications that are specific to massive transfusion along with the ones that we just saw now these include coagulopathy hypocalcemia hyperkalemia hypokalemia and hypothermia and also iron overload now in this case the most important that is coagulopathy uh, the management has to be seen the correction is not necessary if there is no active bleeding or if hemorrhage is not anticipated but we should if it is anticipated it should be managed aggressively and as we said that prevention is by delivering balanced transfusion regimes where prbc to ffp to platelet is done in 1 is to 1 is to 1 ratio for treatment we monitor coagulation routinely we treat the underlying coagulopathies and anti fibrinolytic tranexaminic acid is most commonly administered thank you yeah i think you have almost covered everything in, in yeah yes covered the whole transfusion uh, reaction nothing much to add except that uh, Uh, transfusion related deaths 
uh, although exceedingly rare, uh, they do occur once in a while and are primarily related to trolley, right? Yes. And that is something, and the management, we've already said, the management of trolley is mainly respiratory, respiratory support and all, all towards that particular system. But let me tell you, once in a while, ABO homolytic transmission reactions are also common. As I said earlier, it's mainly the mistake is clerical. But then we need to remember that uh, you have mentioned almost all, uh, every complication possible. But then let us not forget that very often these patients are anesthetized when the transfusion is being done. Number yes. of trans the number of units are being transfused when the patient, when you're operating actually. Yes. So let us not forget that these can occur in the post-operative period also. And yes. in that case, they bring about a lot of confusion, right? You don't know actually how, I mean, I mean, what is the cause? Are they transfusion related or something to do with the operation itself? So that is where your clinical acumen is put to test, yes. right? So just think of it, so many things you have mentioned, and this when it is complicated by the post-operative period where number of transfusions were done when the patient was anesthetized. So that is really a hell of a job. Yes, sir. Right? And, and one more point, the most common complication, the non-hemolytic reaction, which is febrile, you know, febrile. You, transfuse, you start a transfusion, I mean, uh, half an hour later, the you get a call book that the patient is having temperature and all that. So this is the most comp most common non hemolytic complication that you are faced with. So the best way to prevent is before you start uh, a transfusion, make sure that if the patient is uh, uh, taking drugs, uh, taking uh, orally, give him a tab tablet of paracetamol. Okay. Sir. That will take care of it. And if not, you can also uh, give the same drug by other routes. Right. Okay. Uh, on that. Yeah. One important thing, as you say, uh, intraoperative transfusion reaction, the most important uh, suspicion for such reaction is unexplained mm -hmm. hypotension yeah, uh, between uh, operation and uh, 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 unusual bleeding. Uh, because in, in major transfusion reaction, there may be uh, acute onset of uh, uh, coagulation failure. So the other two important things you should keep in mind while giving intraoperative transfusion. If the patient has unexplained hypotension, that means there's not much of loss, but patient is having hypotension, one should suspect uh, uh, intraoperative transfusion reaction. Okay, meaning that's given the details of uh, whole transfusion reactions. So I think uh, it's over, Dr. Shah. Yeah, and, and, and thank you, thank you all the speakers. I mean, the topic was uh, some power. Yeah, nothing, I don't think anything has been left out. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. And, and, uh, and let yeah. me take uh, one one second out here that please, uh, we at NRS Medical College are hosting the SASI CME this month in the last week, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I, I would like to invite you all personally to make sure you register and attend the conference, right? On the first yeah. day, we'll be having some some live surgeries on the, in the workshop. And Friday and Saturday, we'll have the usual proceedings that we have in SASI CME, right? So an, an invitation from my side personally to all of you. Thank Please you, do come. Thank you. And and for postgraduate students, we have a poster session, which is a competitive poster session. So I request a PGs to send their uh, entry for poster presentation. No, no. One more thing. Apart from the poster presentation, we also have another session for. We have a quiz session for particularly for uh, postgraduate trainees. We also have a clinical photography session. Uh, you will be getting uh, information regarding this very soon. So you are all requested to send in some clinical photographs. But since PGTs are too many now, so we have decided that we'll be having two, a maximum three entries per institution. So the, each institution will select or each department of surgery will select two or three best clinical photographs okay. and send it okay. for the final round. Right. Now, these sessions will be going on parallelly, right? So it will not disturb the usual session that is that we taken up in the in the big hall. We'll have a smaller hall where this poster sessions, this clinical photography. We are also trying to come up with a small extempo speech, right? I mean, if that is possible, we are still working it out and we will let you know. Thank you all. And thank you. Thanks, Thank you very much.
Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you.